Hello and welcome, I'm your Kudmaki. Now, if you're an indie dev, you've certainly heard people like myself and other devs ask you to wishlist their game. That's because wishlists are extremely important nowadays. I mention it pretty much every chance that I got while I was working on my game. In the end, it launched with about 4500 wishlists and found some pretty nice success. Now, every once in a while, when I mention just how crucial wishlists are nowadays, when I say that, there are always one or two comments that disagree, and usually their argument is twofold. First of all, they say how wishlists don't guarantee sales, because it's really just someone pressing a button for free, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they won't buy the game when it's out. This argument is somewhat true, meaning that wishlists do not guarantee success. I will cover a few examples on that in a little bit. And then the second argument, this one goes something like, look at the games like Vampire Survivors, and look at how they found massive success, even without any wishlist. And again, that one is technically true. Vampire Survivors is indeed a huge mega indie hit. I believe by now they've sold over 3 million copies on Steam. That is an insane amount. And looking over here at SteamDB, we can see how many wishlists they had before release. We can't directly see number of wishlists, but we can see number of followers. And as a general rule, wishlists are about 10 times followers. As an example, my own game launched with 4,500 wishlists. And if I go down in the charts and I see just before release, I can see that my game launched with about 300 followers. Now the numbers are a little bit off in my case, probably because I have this channel, so that kind of changes things a little bit. But the general consensus is that wishlists are about 10 times followers. So with that information, we can look at the Vampire Survivor stats. And if we go down into charts and we see the wishlist number, first of all, we see an insane increase. This is how successful this game is. And the release over here, this one is the 1.0 release, but we can see all the way back into the early access release. The early access launch was on December 17, 2021. So let's really zoom in onto this tiny part of the graph. And up here we have 21 December 2021, and they had just 30 followers, meaning they had roughly about 300 wishlists at launch. So looking at this example, it seems like those people are correct. This game did not have a ton of wishlists at launch. In fact, they had a tiny amount. And yet, this became one of the biggest hits of the past decade. Yet another example is Phasmophobia. This is another huge hit. They've got 500,000 reviews. In a previous video, I covered the math on how you can estimate game sales based on reviews. Generally, the multiplier for that one is about 40. So with 500,000 reviews, chances are they sold 2 million copies. And again, we can go to SteamDB and check out how many they had before release. And in this case, we can see Phasmophobia had about 400 followers. So about 4,000 wishlists. So a bit better than Vampire Survivors but certainly nothing compared to the massive amount of sales. Like I said, my own game launched with about 4,500 wishlists and definitely did not sell 2 million copies. That is an insane amount. So selling that many based on this number of wishlists, once again, that seems to be an example of how wishlists don't matter. Because again, another one that had a tiny amount of wishlists and sold a massive amount of copies. But of course, if you know anything about statistics, and you can probably already guess the flaw in this argument, the argument of technically you don't need wishlists to find success, for that argument, these games are really the exception, these are not the rule. So while it is technically possible to find massive success without wishlists, doing that is essentially winning the lottery. Which here, of course, every single week or every single month, everyone always wins the lottery. There's always someone who gets millions of dollars, but that of course overshadows all of the millions of people that also bought the lottery and didn't win anything. I also made two really interesting videos a while ago related to this topic. One on how the game Punch a Bunch found massive success. Another one on why my free game, my free Kitchen Chaos game, why that one did not find success. Definitely go watch those videos because pretty much, spoiler alert, the answer to both of those, the answer is the same, which is wishlist. We can go onto Steam and check out the list of popular new releases. Over here we can get a nice idea of just how many games are being successful. Pretty much any game that manages to land on this list, pretty much any of those are going to find some success. And again, over here we can look at the number of views in order to get a nice proxy for how many sellings are sold. For example, here is Flyout, which as of right now has 274 reviews. Again, the multiplier nowadays is about 40, so we can guesstimate that they've sold probably around 12,000 copies. This one came out five days from the time of this recording, so definitely a huge success. And we can go into SteamDB and see how many they had just before release. And the answer is they had 3,000 followers, so about 30,000 wishlists. That's a huge amount, that's definitely enough to find success. Let's look at another example, like this one below the stone. This one has 80 user reviews, so it has probably sold about 3,000 copies in five days. Again, pretty nice result. And we can go and check out the follower stats and see that, yep, this one also launched with about 40,000 wishlists. So looking at these successful games, we can see that for the most part, they had a decent amount of wishlists before release. Now compare that to the all new release list. So this is the list of games published on Steam and literally everything. And right away, as we look, we can already see something. We can already see that tons of these don't even have a review icon, meaning they don't even have 10 reviews. 10 reviews would be about 500 copies sold, so we can see that the majority of games don't even sell 500 copies. Like I've mentioned several times, I definitely encourage you to make games just because it's a very fun activity, it's a very fun thing to create. But also remember that this is a real tough business. 
Anyone can make games for fun, but making games that are financially successful, you can see how that is quite a bit more difficult. So again, we can inspect all these games. Like for example, this one over here, which did actually manage to hit 10 user reviews. It's called You Have No Time. And this one launched with 13 followers, so about 130 wishlists. Then let's see this one, which looks like a competent platformer, but seems to have just one user review. And look at the followers again, just about 10 followers, so just about 100 wishlists. Or this one, Super Dungeon Designer, which sounds like an interesting concept. And again, we see about 300 followers, so about 3,000 wishlists. That is actually a somewhat decent amount, but in general, you need about 7,000 in order to get it on the popular upcoming. So even with a decent amount, suddenly it doesn't really turn into much success. Now, coming back to that first argument where wishlists do not guarantee sales, that argument is actually somewhat correct, meaning that pressing a button just to add the game to your wishlist, that pressing that button is free. So that is actually very different from actually spending some money. There are examples of games that had wishlists but did not find success. Here's one example, a game called Curiosity. And if we see, we can see that before release, they had about a thousand followers. So about 10,000 wishlists. That should be enough to have a successful launch. But we can see suddenly it just got 22 reviews. So that means it probably sold around 800 copies. Another example is called USC Counterforce. This one launched with about 2,000 followers, so about 20,000 wishlists. That's a really nice amount. But suddenly, looking at the reviews, only 44 reviews. So only maybe about 2,000 copies sold. So definitely not terrible, but you would definitely expect more from 20,000 wishlists. I'm pretty sure I even saw this one in a Splattercat gaming video. So this one did get quite a lot of knowledge and the reviews seem positive. So this is definitely a strange, sadly subpar result. So basically, with regards to this argument, the answer is actually quite simple. Wishlists do not guarantee success. But lack of wishlist almost certainly guarantees failure. Although another part of this argument is indeed with regards to wishlist quality, that is certainly a possible factor. However, that generally only becomes a factor if you're trying to do something shady. If you're doing things like giveaways, giving something away in order to get people to wishlist your game, so they have to wishlist your game in order to sign up for some kind of giveaway. If you do that, then yeah, those people generally have no interest in the game at all. So that will definitely pad out the numbers, but it won't actually convert. It won't actually sell to any players. Or even worse, if you literally go to something like the Amazon Mechanical Turk and you pay pretty much one cent to have random people wishlist your game. If you do that, then yeah, that will definitely gather a ton of wishlists, but those will not convert at all. So that will really not matter. But in general, as long as you're not trying to game the system, in general, the quality of the wishlist won't be normal, so the total number of wishes does end up being a great predictor of success for the game. For example, the game Carlson has a monumental amount of wishlists. It's one of the most wishlisted games on Steam, and we can see over here the follower count. Right now, it has an insane 150,000 followers, so probably above 1.5 million wishlists. And since the audience is more casual, chances are it's more than that, so chances are it's probably over 2 million wishlists. That is an insane mind-boggling amount. It is literally number 19 on the entirety of Steam. Now, those wishlists might not convert as well as regular games, just because his audience probably leans more towards the younger side. Although at the same time, by now, some of those kids have probably grown and have probably gotten a job. But still, those wishlists, those were all gathered organically through his videos. They were not gathered through any shady means. So when the game does come out, even if a lot of those do not convert, the game will still pretty much be a guaranteed massive success. So my advice to you is if you're an indie dev trying to find success, then definitely make sure you do everything you can, everything in your power to gather a nice amount of wishlist before release. The general number you should aim for is at least 7,000. That is roughly the amount that you need in order to get on the popular upcoming list. If you want to try doing this as a job, if you want to try finding success, if so, then marketing really is not optional. It is something you have to do. You can go watch my marketing video to learn the basics. Do that and gather as many wishlists as you can through whatever method you can. So these could be blog posts, they could be Reddit gifs, posts on Twitter, devlogs, meme videos, shorts, tutorials, really whatever method works for you. For me, my main method is this educational channel. So I make tutorials and people enjoy the tutorials that I make and they also see non-tutorial videos. So for example, they saw my devlogs and through those I managed to gather 4,500 wishlists and with that my game had a pretty successful launch. But at the same time, like I always say, you can definitely make games just for fun. So if you don't want to turn this into a job at all, then feel free to ignore all this and just make an awesome game. And if you want to learn how to make games better and faster, check out my Ultimate Unity Overview course. I just put out the 53 update, bringing the number of lectures over 70. Each one covers a different tool or feature of the engine, and many of which you might not know about and might be super useful to whatever game you're currently working on. Or if all you need are just some tools, and there are two excellent bundles right now. There's one on Humble Bundle with a massive amount of stuff, all at 98% off. And one on the assets who are ending soon, containing tons of assets to build pretty much any game you can think of. Alright, so I really wish you the best of luck with your games. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.